Hi, Sarah. Good morning, Angelina. Good, Good morning. morning. So what I'd like to do when everybody's joined is maybe have everybody give a brief introduction as to who they are and then I'll introduce myself and then we can uh, share some experiences or questions and take it from there. Okay, uh, me, I'm uh, kind of like the jack of all trades here uh, <laughs> in the Calgary campus. Uh, I'm heavily involved with the, um, uh, uh, with the uh, health uh, sciences department here. Um, but, uh, also take care of, uh, IT and, uh, uh, do a lot of other things here. Uh, you know, the, uh, photography, videography, all that kind of stuff as well. So, um, I teach the, um, uh, currently I teach the, uh, uh, uh community support program and also teach the, uh, pharmacy assistant program as well. So, and... Hi. On occasion, I teach uh, the computing skills uh, programs as well. So, okay, yeah. that's where my weakness is. That's for sure. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> you're not so tech savvy. <laughs> no, no, I get by. <laughs> you get by. It. Okay, you know get how by. to turn it on and uh, exactly. click and drag. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So exactly. <clears throat> oh, okay. nowadays that's pretty much all you need to know nowadays it seems you know computers are so easy to use um you know i started back in the day when um uh you had to do board level repair uh yeah. <clears throat> that's that's when i started and uh now you know something breaks down you replace the whole component uh, uh that whole mm -hmm. part uh but back when i started you had to fix that part um right <clears throat> okay uh, is it Sanjit? Is that how you enunciate your name? Yes. Sanjeevi is my... Uh, actually, it's interesting. Uh, Sanjeevi is my husband's name. <laughs> okay, so what's your name? Ponoli. Ponoli? Yeah, Ponoli. Okay. So tell me about yourself, Ponoli. Okay, so um, my training is in physiotherapy. Um, so I came here nine years ago. Um, I sorry, when you, when you say here, where are you? Uh, sorry, a as in now? Oh, yeah. I'm, in uh, I'm in Calgary. You're in Calgary? Okay. Yeah, is I'm everybody in Calgary? Yeah, everyone is oh, in okay. Calgary. Okay. So uh, my training is in physiotherapy and I did my master's in sports and orthopedic physiotherapy. Um, I've got like um, 16 years of experience in that field. So I came here nine years ago. Um, I was in and out working in Singapore, uh, originally from Singapore. Nice. So um, it's a new area. Um, so I realized that research is important. So I started doing, I wanted to do something different in, in Canada because the practice in physiotherapy is a slightly different from how we practice it in Singapore and Australia. And um, I've seen research, but I've not seen research at, at a deeper level. So when I started this course, it was really quite eye-opening because uh, it was a real eye-opener because they do lots of paperwork, you know, submission to the regulatory authorities. They have so many criteria. They have the, um, the uh, what's it called, the, uh, you know, the, the, the board submissions. They have so much of paperwork to be done. And then it was really interesting how they do it at different levels. And it was really nice, interesting to know how trials are actually done. We read lots of papers. Um, I've done my thesis, but I didn't know what is behind that paper, that the work that goes on, goes on with it. So it was really interesting and um, yeah, uh, it was really good. And towards the end, we started learning a lot more like data management, um, budgeting and all those um, areas. So, yep. So I have lots of interest in cancer trials because I never thought I would be uh, interested in cancer drugs. But um, yeah. Um, it's a, it's an interesting journey and awesome. lots of learning lots of learning yeah okay well i appreciate you sharing and you. um and is it anua yeah hanulua mm -hmm. anu for short <laughs> okay anu is you. the same here okay i have um a background in the uh, sciences medical uh, biological sciences microbiology and i have a master's uh, degree in immunology so 
I came here last year, February, to be precise. Um, I when I came around, immediately we came around. The lockdown started, so to maximize the time, just coming coming in newly, I registered for a community support uh, worker program at a college, and um, I the what made me to make the decision was that i briefly worked with a, a special need child in an elementary school back in nigeria before i came to canada so that made me to make the decision just to have a broader knowledge on uh, how to take care of uh, people with uh, special needs but um, really career wise my long-term goal is to go into the research uh, field fortunately for me as i was rounding up i had a mentor with a uh, client then um there's an organization for immigrants that helps in career so so she told me about this program since i'm interested in research that i could do this program a clinical research program that it will help me in uh, balancing myself into the research field so i registered for i put in for this program and it's uh, so far so good it has broadened my horizon about um what uh, activity are uh, putting into research that new things don't just come about like that that there are a lot of work a lot of um research that have put that are put in place and um, the roles of researcher when um in development of new information drugs anything and uh, how science has participated to the old world in general and i think um i like it although now we are going in for practicum but i'm still undecided about that because i'm uh, expecting and i'm in a fix whether to go in for practicum now or to wait till after delivery so i see lots going on yeah <laughs> okay nice to meet you Same sarah time. Hello, Angelina. So, uh, my name is Sarah, and uh, I am from India. I came I came to Canada in the in 2015, and uh, basically, I'm a medical doctor by profession. And uh, right now, I'm preparing for my licensure exams here in Canada and in US. And uh, along with uh, my licensure exam, I also do voluntary activities a lot in the hospital and also in the clinics. And um, I also do voluntary activity with uh, ICNA Sisters Canada. So that is the uh, nonprofit organizations where we go to hospitals, clinic, or we go to um, senior day, a day home also and help them in understanding our culture or help them in, in, um, in their uh, in their various day-to-day uh, -day life how to how 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 they can cope up with their uh, living and yeah. uh, since we know that senior day home they are already they have advanced stages of their life or they have some advanced stages of their diseases so we help them in yeah. in, in um, uh, in they are we are just help helping them in alleviation of their mood and um, and also, I got interested in clinical research uh, uh, almost three years back because I lost my one of my best friends who mm -hmm. I studied with, and um, she got cancer, and she did not, and she could not uh, survive anymore. So since then, I thought to uh, go into the clinical research so that I can explore more on the diagnosis and the treatment aspects in clinical research. So I got to know about Bay River College here in Calgary, and uh, since then I uh, in the year uh, in this year starting beginning of this year uh, January 2021. So I started my applied clinical research course, and uh, here I am. I'm planning to do practicum as well uh, once I'm done with the theory part. So we are almost done with the theory part. Excellent. Nice to meet you. Tanya, we're just in the process of interviewing, of uh, introducing ourselves. Um, yes, hi. I don't know, do you guys all know each other or? Yes. You yes. Do? Okay. Well, this is more for me then. Uh, Tanya, yes. tell me a little bit about yourself. 
Yes, so good to meet you, Angelina. Um, so I'm also a medical doctor. I graduated from med school back from Pakistan. Then I did my master's in clinical research, and I was uh, very much involved in teaching undergrad medical and dental students. Then I came to, I published a few uh, papers also. Then I came to Canada uh, in 2013, and um, was taking it a bit easy and then around two years back I started teaching at a couple of community colleges so I was teaching their pharmacy program and uh, medical office program recently because I needed to be affiliated with uh, you know the healthcare side for some time uh, in any way and then I got into this ACR program and um, uh, currently I'm doing my practicum at University of Calgary so um yeah it's 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 quite fun enjoyable having it's a new experience altogether thank you uh, i'm going to share a little bit about who i am and what i do and then perhaps you can tell me what it's what exactly it is that you're looking for um i'm sure it's some kind of guidance or mentoring or coaching just help me understand so um as you know my name is angelina brathwaite I work for a global staffing and recruitment agency called Brunel and um, Brunel's head office is in the Netherlands and it's a publicly traded organization. I'm physically located in Toronto and I'm part of the North American region. So the North American region includes Brazil, Guyana, uh, Calgary, Houston, Boston and Toronto. So my responsibilities ultimately is um, managing, uh, leading the pharmaceutical practice in the life science division. So in the life science division, we have pharmaceutical, we have medical device, we have animal health and cannabis. And so I've been with the organization for over 15 years now. And I'm also responsible for leading the diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging for the region. And so we have relationships with uh, large multinational pharmaceutical companies as, as well as smaller organizations. Um, I know the challenge for some people is if they do not have the Canadian experience, how do you relate that over to, to the role that you have now? So those are some of the challenges and those are some of the discussions that we're having with our, our clients specifically with the lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I would like to understand from, from, from all of you, what have been, how have you been performing your, your, how have you, one, have you strategized for your searches? Have you been on any type of interviews? What are some of the roadblocks that you're experiencing? And maybe together we could come, come to a conclusion on how to mitigate some of those challenges. So maybe Tanya, if we could start with you. Uh, so you've been in Canada since 2013. Yeah, you've been teaching and and uh, whatnot. But what are some of the roadblocks that you're experiencing? So I believe it's the first and I think everybody would agree with me. Calgary is a small city. It's like a small like it's yeah. like, you know, like a good combination between a big town and a small city. And over here, I really feel that networking really counts. It's it it is what you know also, but it's, but it's actually who you know also and who can connect you to the right people. Then the other main challenge is that Calgary is an oil and oil and gas based city, although even that's not doing great these days. But uh, uh, so um, so it's not the hub for you know for research. Although uh, UFC is actually making this huge Tom Baker Institute a cancer research institute, so I'm hoping that things will sort of open up. But um, uh, so that's uh, that's one because you know when we were applying, uh, we do. Uh, apply at LinkedIn and through other, uh, uh, you know, through other social media platforms, there are hardly any jobs in Calgary for research. So yeah, that's from my side. Okay, well, the good news is, is, um, although COVID has been a nightmare for for many of us, it's mm -hmm. also created some opportunities. So mm -hmm. what we're starting to see now in the marketplace is that um, clients are open 
uh, to have individuals work remotely. So yes. You, you shouldn't preclude yourself by just restricting yourself to this geographic area. Sure. I would, you could look in the U.S., you could look anywhere in Canada now. Um, not all companies are, are open to that. Some of them are just doing like a hybrid situation. But mm -hmm. there are clients that we're seeing right now is open to people working remotely because it has right. been successful for many. Yeah. But so in U.S., they would prefer U.S. citizens, I'm thinking. Sometimes, but there's a lot of times where they would... It's, it's almost advantageous for them if they have an entity here to pay somebody in Canadian dollars. It's cheaper. Yeah. So um, yeah. There, there is that opportunity as well. Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, networking. So I, in my role, I have to do a lot of networking in order to build my practice, in order to have relationships with clients and to have access. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you do that. Um, a lot of that, again, in the last year has been through networking uh, virtually. So I'm on uh, a board called Women's Leaders in Pharma. Have you heard of them? I uh, know. Yeah. So they have a lot of events um, where the whole premise behind Women Leaders in Pharma is to promote women and to, to be the better versions of themselves, to, to make them feel empowered. Right. Um, and is this like an online thing or? It is. So oh. um, we, were having, we were having physical meetings, but over... Uh, COVID, we've done a lot of virtual. We have an event coming up. If you go, if you Google Women's Leaders in Pharma, yeah. you'll okay. see that um, they'll have an event coming up. I just did a, I did a podcast on on leadership recently that you could listen to. Um, I did a panel on diversity, which was recorded. They have a lot of senior women from from different, um, like the one of the board members. She's uh, she's head of Takeda, we had another woman who's now, she's no longer with Women's Leaders in Pharma, but she's now the country head for Moderna. Oh, okay. So nice. We have different volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, so we have an event committee, there's a diversity committee, there's digital committees. And so these women um, all have been making these volunteer contributions, but they're also branding who, they're, who they are. So I would, um, as part of your strategy, I would expand your network to ensure that you, there's also biotech, uh, women biotech. I'm not part of that, but I am on the board for WLP. So take a look into those uh, environments as well as consider their remote possibility. Great. Yeah. Thank you. And when you're, as part of your networking strategy, try to connect with as many people as you can on LinkedIn. Uh -huh. Try to align yourself with those you may have attended school with back home. Yeah. That's, that's always helpful. Yeah. And you send them a note on LinkedIn and you say, you know, um, I, I, I recognize that you could do a couple of things. So one, you just say something along the lines. I always make it my intention to get to know those I'm connected with. Do you have a couple of minutes to speak with me next week? Or right. It is right. And right. then you have your plea, your your questions in advance. So if you're speaking to somebody, for instance, who is a, a clinical project manager, you might want to ask some questions about their specific organization. Uh, what's it like being a PM in their environment? What are some of the challenges? Um, do they do they have succession planning in their organization? What is their DEI strategy? Um, you know, are they are they hiring anytime soon? And and what would they what does a good PM look like in their environment? So those are some of the conversations that you can have with with people that you attach yourself with on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody's going to respond to you. Sometimes you might send out uh, 100 and you might get back five. But that's yeah. five more connections than what you've had previously. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Thank you. And networking is not just one time. It's consistent. You have to consistently build out your network as one person knows another person knows another person. Uh, so that would be instrumental in, in yeah. helping you. Mm -hmm. And also, like anything else, you have to streamline your search. So if you want to look 
identify some companies in which you want to work for mm -hmm. and, and target those companies and how you target those companies is maybe, you know, establishing those contacts on network, uh, on, on, on LinkedIn, that might be another way as well. Right, right. Yeah, we we're doing all of this. So we made our resumes and uh, we we're sending them out through LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah, but but just sending out your resume through LinkedIn is not yeah, sufficient. But also like messaging them and connecting with them on a one to one basis. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm doing that for sure. Yeah. And maybe reach out to um, if an organization has uh, a manager or a chief of diversity, equity and inclusion. That could also be a conduit for you. OK. All right. Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let me just go back here. Sarah, um, what are some of your challenges? Are they similar in nature or? It's almost the same. So I believe that networking is the main, uh, main aspect here to get connected into the system. So. But also recognize that networking is not just connecting with somebody and you have to build that relationship with that person. Because if you come to me or if you go to Shelly or to, to, to Tanya and you say, hey, I'm looking for a job and all this, that you have to build some kind of trust. So how do you build some kind of trust with that person? Potentially, it could be like joining Women's Leaders in Pharma and working with some of the the volunteer groups that you're working with similar to what you're doing now at the hospital and whatnot because you have to build that trust that they are comfortable endorsing who you are right yeah okay yeah thank you all right um pondy <laughs> did i see your name wrong <laughs> no, okay, okay. Pond Oli. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. Um, I, I, I would agree because um, I think that the the, the, road, the major roadblock is because um, Alberta is an oil and gas city. So um, you do not see like very big pharma companies or research companies over here. Um, they are actually major like technology. I mean, major technology industries are going to come in now. Um, so yes, it's about how you know uh, whom you know then what you know from my experience actually yeah so um yeah like what you said it's good to um, reconnect and um, connect i have connected because uh, with some of my friends in back in singapore who are totally into research some of my clots classmates are doing complete research but um their connections are mostly in australia and singapore but nothing in um, us or in the canada so yeah i'll work on that like what you have advised okay and uh, Anua, I'm messing up everybody's name. Uh, yes, Anu for short. Yeah, I've also had some challenges, especially when I finished my community support worker. It was very difficult for me to get a practical placement. But, and I realized that most companies in uh, Canada, they usually prefer someone inside to refer you before you can get uh, employed as an outsider and the job i have i was referred by somebody already working there so that was one of the challenges and the canadian experience stuff although on linkedin i've connected with some of my um, classmates from the university that are already in canada and working in um, some research area and yeah. um, there is also one nigerian researcher pharmaceutical researcher a group that I joined and they post updates, but I'm yeah. open. But that's, on, then, that's on Facebook, right? No, um, it's on LinkedIn. I saw the um, link on uh, a WhatsApp group I have, so I joined. Well, I saw it on their yeah, group is on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. so, although mainly I would love to work in a government um, establishments. That's my goal, not uh, for my have have um, uh, Rafael, I don't think we've met. You want to your hello, you wanna... Angela, Angelina, Angelina, Angelina. Hi, Angelina. Yeah. Uh, so my background, what are we talking about? Sorry, I missed. I, I, I 
I got the email that it was 10, but I did not check that it was moved to 9. So sorry for joining late. Uh, so everybody has introduced themselves. I introduced my, themselves. We're talking about a little bit about some of the challenges that they're experiencing. So part of it is, uh, you know, working in Calgary where it's a small demographic and then we've got the networking situation. Um, and right. What I was suggesting was that, um, you know, given COVID, COVID has been uh, negative, negatively impacted us, but there's also been some positives. And some of the positives is that clients are starting to look at people to work remotely as opposed to, you know, going into the office every day. Some of them are having a hybrid role. So don't limit yourself just to Calgary. You could consider the U.S., consider Canada. We talked about sending out uh, profiles on LinkedIn. And once you connect, just telling people you make it their intention to get to know them, have a conversation with them, make sure that you plan your conversation in advance, um, asking them about the organization that they're working for and uh, what are some of the challenges, what are some of the opportunities, what are some of the risks, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah. So uh, my background is that uh, I was working as a physician in Pakistan and I've moved to Calgary about uh, it's been two years now. Uh, so when I moved here, definitely uh, I, I faced the same issues that everyone is facing that, uh, you know, uh, uh, lack of networking. I did not know anyone. Uh, so I started working some odd jobs to support myself. And then uh, I was also taking the exams uh, to get the license. And uh, I, I was trying to figure out that I have to get enter into the uh, field of medicine because I, I have the medical background. So, so how can I enter into medicine uh, in, in one way or the other? So uh, I was always interested in research. So uh, Bay River College, uh, Mr. Arshad and Shelly, they were introducing this course and I spoke with uh, Mr. Arshad. So he told me that this is a new program in, in Calgary. There, there were other programs in Toronto. So I thought that this might be a good idea to to you know uh, to get, get into this college and uh, get uh, the certificate done, get the, the diploma done. And uh, it, so that it not, not only it will help me brush up my skills to learn about more about clinical research, but it will help me connect with people. So, so far it has been really good. I've learned a lot uh, from where I started uh, about clinical research and uh, our instructor, Shelly, she has been very helpful uh, in connecting us uh, with other, uh, you know, uh, recruiters and everyone. So, I, I'm very hopeful that in, in, in near future, we all will be working in uh, some part of the clinical research industry, either remotely or on site. Yeah, um, I, I did a, a presentation, I think it was last month or the month before, for the Clinical Research Association of Canada. And on that panel, they had um, some uh, hiring managers from PRA and PPD and what they were saying, I don't know if you've, uh, if any of you had investigated, but they're taking on people without experience. So they're there, they have a training program. So I don't know if there's any other CROs like Covance or IQVIA, if they have training programs, if you've uh, looked into those. Um, so they're looking you, at um, Pardon me. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, Angelina. So IQVIA is, um, I think, I don't know if it's big or not, but it, it it has its presence in Calgary also for sure. Yeah, so all all of them, um, you know, I'm sure they're doing some succession planning because there 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 are some uh, sites that are going to be in Calgary. So the CRO would, um, you know, potentially have some sites in Calgary. So there might be some opportunities for some training there as well. Um, you could look into that, but. Have any of you been on interviews? Uh, so I, I had, I had, uh, I had uh, just because of this practicum. So I had two interviews at the UFC. So one was yesterday, and that's when they said that you know come over for the practicum, and um, yeah, it went well. Uh, I think this. Uh, I was telling Shelley also yesterday. This uh, it, so this was an intensive course for us also, but I think they they covered nearly everything 
under the sun for as a CRO because you know they asked me about informed consent and you know how would you deal with patients and then obviously our academic qualifications also came into play so yeah so I I've had a couple um, both with the UFC yeah so it's very important when you're going out on an interview that clients are looking for your technical aptitude right but what's equally important and sometimes more important is your emotional intelligence and that would include things like adaptability collaboration uh, when you're dealing with patients um, sensitivity creativity innovativeness so those are things that clients are looking for when they're having the conversation with you. So you can have some skill sets that you've acquired outside of Canada, but if you're able to translate what your value is to the client by utilizing your emotional intelligence, you're going to have a greater success. Because, um, you know, the landscape of, of hiring is changing a lot because clients are starting to look for how can we groom Tanya or Sarah to be the head of, of uh, clinical research in our organization three to five years from now? And so they're not just looking at what you can do for them immediately. They're looking for long term because they're looking for that stability. And so um, there's certain things that you can't teach people. You can't teach people kindness. You can't teach people to get along with other people. So those are things that they're looking at. And so you're going to have to be able to tell a story about your, you have to determine what's your value proposition. What's going to, what's going to um, differentiate Sarah from Tanya, right? So you could say, oh, well, you know, I, I looked after patients and I did this and I did that, but that's not good enough. It's like, what did you do specifically that is your value proposition. What is your brand that you want to share with the client? And you have to be able to tell the story, not just go in and say, well, I was a medical doctor and I did this and I did that and I did this and I did that. Yes. No. Okay. You, you've, got, you've got to show your value, you know, uh, about, you know, tell a story about a patient, how you were mm -hmm. compassionate with the patient, how you were compassionate with the family or they weren't you weren't able to access a certain drug so you were able to get them on the clinical trial whatever your story is but it has to be a story and it's hard when you just submit a resume into a portal because nobody can hear your story nobody can hear your voice nobody can feel your emotion right so that's why it's imperative to build those relationships build your network and then you know leverage that experience sometimes you might just get a hit where where you submit your resume and and you get an interview with a recruiter or, or with um with an organization but it's easier once you had a relationship with somebody hi, hi shelly how you doing Good, good. So I apologize. I was late. I did reschedule the meeting for today, but I couldn't. Um, no problem. Risk reschedule mine. So very well said. Thank you so much for giving all these uh, great insights. Um, how they put, um, how they tell the story about their experience and how they build trust and respect in their network. Because if we have these two elements of respect and trust then I think it's very easy to uh, get uh, the career you love and show them how you can contribute and how you deliver the best uh, possible results. Case um, in point, Shelly asked me to speak to you guys. The reason why she was able to ask me to speak with all of you is because she knows me. Exactly. Right? Um, feel free to send me your resume. I cannot make any guarantees. But in the event something happens, I could share your resume with my recruitment team. We are starting to see clients move the needle as it relates to people who are new, newer to Canada. Um, they understand that there's um, a lot of creativity in neurodiversity when, because people bring different 
ideas as opposed to everything just being the same all the time, homogeneous. So we're starting to see a little bit of shift. We're having conversations with our clients because as you know, I said to you before that I'm responsible for the diversity, equity and inclusion for Brunel. And part of that is educating our clients as well as our candidates. So um, again, reach out to the, to the diversity, equity, inclusion leaders of these organizations. Make sure you are um, attached to them on LinkedIn. Send the type of message that I encouraged you to have and you know, make it your intention to get to know them on the other side. Um, do not uh, limit yourself just to Calgary clients or are starting to, to uh, accept remote workers. And, you know, just be diligent. I know it gets frustrating and I know it erodes your, your confidence, but just keep going. You will get there. I promise you, you will get there. Great. Thank you. And join, uh, not, not you, Rafi, Rafi. Sorry, but join Women's Leaders in Pharma and other, and, or, and other organizations like that. Look for something that you can... Um, that you can be engaged with, that you can learn from, that you can, you know, build those those relationships with. Yeah, he's part of ACRP. ACRP. Part Great. Of ACRP. Yeah. There's ACRP, there's CRAC, which is a Clinical Research Association of Canada. Right. There's the Women's Leaders, there's the Women of Biotech, um, and there's some other organizations as well. Just do your due diligence, do some Googling. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Angelina. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. So you guys can link up with me on LinkedIn. How's that? Just send yeah, me that sounds good. You can send me your resume there. Okay. okay. Um, Angelina, do you yeah. also recruit for government agencies? No, I don't have a lot of relationships with government agencies, unfortunately. Okay yeah uh just uh one thing before you leave uh first off thank you very much for joining us and uh second is uh since you you know you're inv involved with the inclusivity and uh uh and and whatnot with your company um one thing that i found as a challenge for a lot of people is anyone with uh, any adversities uh when it comes to like uh disabilities right uh, 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 you know, finding employment. And uh, so in your line of work, uh, where you work at, um, uh, uh, how has been your approach with, uh, let's say, people with uh, uh, either physical disabilities or let's say um, any other kind of disabilities, let's say, uh, you know, Asperger's syndrome, for example, which I actually have, believe it or not. Um, uh, when I was younger, I was very autistic uh, when I was younger, but uh, now I've kind of acclimated now, but, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, you know, have you had any background in, in dealing with uh, people like that? Yeah, well, I, at this point, I've been doing this since about a year and a half. And so a lot of the times it's educating the client in terms of what they're missing, they're missing opportunities when they are not being inclusive. And so with the organization, it needs to be endorsed from the very, from the sea level. So we're starting to see a shift, not only in pharma, but in other industries. And so each, each organization has what they consider um, inclusive diversity. So inclusive diversity could be, you know, could be gender, could be race, it could be somebody's religion. Um, we're, we're, we're talking about those, those visibilities, sorry, those, um, those profiles that are not visible. So like you said, with the Asperger's or, you know, a, a male who wants to have less hour, work, less hours at work, or they have a child that they need to take care of or a, or a sick parent. So clients are starting to uh, adapt that way of thinking. It's not going to happen overnight, but all we can do is our best in terms of communicating that 
strategy with our client that it brings a lot of creativity it brings a lot of uh, its sustainability commitment from the from the candidate side and and from the client side that loyalty piece yeah i'm glad you mentioned that you know training the uh clients themselves uh because uh there's this one video i show my csw students or the community support worker uh, uh students and it's from uh, Philip uh, DeFranco. I don't know if you've heard of him or not, but um, uh, he had uh, done this documentary on uh, hiring people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, he noted uh, through his research that uh, uh, the industry in, uh, or industries in North America is losing out over $13 billion yeah. every yeah. year by mm -hmm. not hiring people with uh, disabilities. Mm -hmm. 13 billion, yeah. That's well, how the, much is uh, lost in the low, uh, in the economies. Yeah, well, the good news, uh, Leonard, is, is that one third of the working force now is um, younger generation. They're not my age and people around my age, they have a certain way of thinking and they're saying that, you know, um, 70% of the workforce is not going to tolerate uh, those kinds of um, racist attitudes or discriminatory attitudes. So we're definitely starting to see the shift. And in order for companies to excel, they're, they need to recognize that, that this is something that they need to do. And you're going to see a lot of clients or, or companies brand more of their soft instead of branding their their product they're going to brand their their social engagement so whether that is for the environment or helping people so you're going to see that shift it's happening yeah i'm already seeing it now uh like uh, for example i used to work for with this one company believe it or not i was actually in power engineering a while back and uh like i said i've done a little bit of everything um but uh uh the company that i worked with yeah uh uh you know uh, they actually rebranded themselves completely changed mm -hmm. the company name everything and during the rebranding process uh yeah uh they were doing exactly what you said they were uh, um, uh, earlier in mm -hmm. regards to uh making themselves apparent in the community as far as yeah. like uh you know uh, uh caring about the environment caring about uh you know uh let's say the less advantaged uh you know uh, it goes on and on right yeah the marginalized uh, communities yeah 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 so um you can if you have any questions or if you're going out on an interview and you need some um some assistance in terms of how to prep for the interview. I'll do my best to to help you depending on, on time, but um, I will try and make myself available. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Angelina, for your time. If if you have any question, go ahead. If not, we can wrap the wrap up the meeting. Thank you so much, Angelina. You're welcome. My pleasure. Nice to meet everybody. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. And like I said, don't get discouraged. You guys got this. You have it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for backing us up. Of course. My pleasure. So yeah. see Thank you, you everyone. See you, uh, see you at 2 o'clock. Bye now. Okay. Bye. Good night. Bye.